Now, the reason you'd want to do this is because if you're in an untreated room or you're likely to tap your desk or you've got cars that go past or you've got a fridge or anything that generates low frequency energy, that will go into your microphone. I am Nathan Oakley and in this video, I'm going to show you a useful trick that I've just learned in Voice Meter Banana. You just click on this tab and that will automatically set a 50 hertz high pass. It's a trick that, in my opinion, anybody who's doing a podcast should definitely take advantage of. What I'm going to be applying is a high pass filter to the output of Voice Meter Banana and show you what exactly I mean by that. In Voice Meter, in my case, Banana, but it's the same in Potato, there are EQ buttons down here. Now, for me, A1 applies to my output to my speakers. So for a lot of people, that'll be the case. A1 will be their speakers and potentially A2 will be their headphones, perhaps. Uh, maybe they've got a second set of monitors, but in any case, the last two lines are my outputs. So I've got an output that goes to my guests and an output that goes to OBS. And it's these that I'm gonna mainly focus on, although I will show you a further trick that I use in this EQ. If you just left click it, it'll just turn on. But if you right click it, it'll bring up a seven band parametric EQ. Very, very cool indeed. What I'm applying because the EQ is on is this, which is called a high pass filter. So in here you've got a high shelf, low shelf, high pass, low pass, and then you can put any number of adjustments to any of these curves that you've got. What I'm gonna apply in this instance is a high pass filter, and I've already preset it to 70 Hertz, but I'm gonna show you how you do this. So when you first come into this menu, um, it'll be highlighted on the A line, but you just click on this tab, and that will automatically set a 50 Hertz high pass, which means anything that is higher than 50 Hertz will pass. And you can probably see from the curve that they set, I think they've got a 12 dB per octave or something like that roll off. Um, it starts, even though it's set at 50, at 100. So that's because you need a smooth transition into whatever frequency that you're actually trying to roll off um, to any noticeable degree. Now the reason you'd want to do this is because if you're in an untreated room or you're likely to tap your desk or you've got cars that go past or you've got a fridge or anything that generates low frequency energy, that will go into your microphone and the chances are you won't be even slightly aware of it and uh, it can mess with other settings that are being done in OBS. If you've got various filters and compressors, it'll just take the energy from whatever's got the most energy and if it happens to be at, I don't know, 100 uh, cycles, it'll just take that energy. Whereas the human voice probably drops to about, I don't know, 70 or 80 hertz at a guess at the absolute lowest. So therefore, for my money, <laughs> a 70 hertz high pass filter is absolutely ideal for podcasting. That is what I want to engage on this. I've got it set to everything. So both my output lines have got the same high pass filter engaged at exactly the same rate so 70 hertz so my guests aren't going to be pestered with low frequency energy that they don't need to cope with why not i can stick it on it doesn't cost anything to eq the output line to my guests um but ultimately you can now hear not that it's going to make a great deal of difference as i'm talking right now um precisely what the eq will do um because i don't have any extraneous low frequency energy that i'm aware of um, so there we go. That is the parametric EQ that you can apply in various different bands. I will show you on this EQ. So this is my speaker line output. In my room, I happen to have a, a, a very troublesome room mode, an axial room mode across the length of the room at 37 hertz. And it bumps up 37 hertz, which is a very deep frequency, to the tune of about 10 dB and it is irritating um, whenever anything plays at that note. It's just 10 dB louder than everything else. So typically, you need to you know, engage some fairly sophisticated software. Mini DSP is one of those pieces of software that you could 
basically try and EQ your subwoofer or main speakers at a particular tricky room mode frequency to even out the bass response. Um, whereas if you happen to <laughs> be using voice meter banana and you do actually use it as an output, I, I actually don't. I, I tend to um, use the direct signal, so I don't actually use any EQ. Um, if I'm honest, I just go SP diff and it, it won't allow me to add anything if I use um, this particular line out. Now, everything always goes on that line out. SP diff is how it comes out of my computer um, digitally into my preamp. Um, but uh, if I'm actually using that direct into the preamp so that the preamp can see things like Dolby Digital signals to click in those processing modes, um, it won't let me apply any EQ. Whereas if I'm running through um, the auxiliary output mode, which is voice meter banana, it will. And therefore I can apply this parametric EQ to my speakers and improve the sound. Now if you're somebody who's familiar with Room EQ Wizard, potentially you could go through um, this and do it with the EQ software if your sound card will allow it. It was called Windows EQ or something like that, which has a parametric EQ in it, which you can apply across the system. Um, but it just, like I said, it didn't want to work with, with the way I have my setup and um, with a digital output from the computer. But this definitely will, you know, it's, it's a mixing desk. So this will definitely apply. In my case, I think I've put minus nine or something like that at the bottom of the bell. Um, at 37 hertz with a with a curve that extends out to where that frequency is troublesome in the exact polar opposite of the frequency and amplitude at the rate and peak that I've got. So this is an identical mirror to that troubling room mode. Now don't get me wrong, there's there's all sorts of other room modes that are still giving me two or three or six sometimes dB plus or minus across the whole range, but none of them are particularly irritating. In other words, you don't notice them, it's just that, that note plays and if it's a little bit louder, your brain's not perceiving it. But certainly this note at, at 10 dB louder is. Um, so it's useful, if that's something you're into, uh, to have a, a very good quality parametric EQ that can be applied um, to the, the output stage going to your um, preamplifier from your computer and then onto your power amps and then onto your speakers and then into your room and then hopefully not generating that room mode that might be annoying you. Um, if there are people out there who are inclined in that direction i'd tidy up their room modes if you know what i'm talking about if you don't don't worry about it anyway that's my uh, tips on how to get a bit of a better sound out of your podcast the main one being apply a high pass filter which is a low cut filter so high pass low cut it's the same thing um so it's cutting the low frequencies um, which means that the compressors inside obs the filters that you would use don't have to work so hard so they're not concentrating on energy that they might not necessarily need to deal with. Um, if you've got a, a compressor that's kicking in at minus 20 in my case, you know, somewhere around here-ish, then why have it dealing with or kicking in because it's got a certain amount of low frequency energy going into the mic from a car that's driven past, for instance. Um, but there we go, that's, that's uh, my top tip for um, getting your podcast sounding a little bit better cut the low frequencies out. You don't need them. Your voice isn't extending that low. Uh, I'll do a quick A-B comparison to see if it does. It does, as I say, so that you don't notice, it does roll it off higher than the the absolute lowest frequencies so that you don't notice it's being rolled off. So that, you know, the fact that it starts a little bit higher up on the graph, don't, don't let that worry you. It is actually realistically rolling off at 70 hertz which is what it's set here i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next video